I'm just not creative after all. You not creative? Mm -mm. Show us what you're making. I am trying to make a time machine. A time machine. <gasps> a time machine? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do right my, here. Oh my, oh my. Thank you guys so much for taking the time. I'm, I'm super excited to talk about a wonderful day with Mabel McClay. Um, of course, you are a husband-wife team, but also the creators of the show. So maybe start with, how'd you come up with the name? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, a Wonderful Day with Mabel McClay. Uh, it's got a little bit of a nod to Mr. Rogers and um, it really uh, to us embraces the idea that life is wonderful and it's worth wondering about. And so um, we really wanted to lead with that right off the bat. I love that. And you know, I love how each episode tackles a theme or, you know, a personality trait or, or something that, you know, can help us grow. Talk a little bit about this approach and then like, how that led into creating them the show. Yes, we, um, well, we wanted to give each episode a virtue, a character virtue that we were gonna dive into. And a lot of them were inspired by our previous work. We had a small business where we taught children improv classes in Los Angeles for 10 years. And so through the study of improv, we were always leading kids toward um, growing their social emotional skills. And so we did talk about things like listening and eye contact and confidence and courage when you're scared. And so this show really feels like an extension of that work. And we knew we wanted to keep exploring those um, themes when making the show. So Katie, you're Mabel. I love this. And Ryan, yes. you're, fi you're find it Fred. <laughs> I am a neighbor, yes, who shares interests uh, with Mabel uh, in, um, uh, uh, fun, practical, uh, watch my things as she calls them on the show. And, um, yeah, I pop in as a neighbor and, uh, we share the excitement of, uh, things that especially find at Fred. He's kind of like, uh, the dad, uh, hitting those, uh, Saturday morning garage sales and, uh, you know, garage full of trinkets that hopefully we'll get to see, uh, in, in season two and three. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting, especially our kids being like, you guys are what <laughs> your neighbors. <laughs> Your mom and dad. We joke that there will be a whole spinoff of like our love story. We're going to get married and have children one day. But it's like, no, that's <laughs> that's not really what this show is. <laughs> He's just well, a neighbor. In, in real life, you ha you have three, is it three kids? Yeah. Three so kids, how, yeah. Did, how did they help inform the show either directly or just from like oh, yeah. your parenting lens? Yes. Yeah, big time. For sure. I mean, we did, we've worked with kids for our entire careers, but I always say that we weren't really great teachers until we came became parents. Um, and so I, I love that I'm getting to play this role now through the lens of being a mom because I have a different point of view and I have a different um, a, a tone with children and a, a gentleness about me that, that maybe I didn't have when I was younger. But they helped so much. We built a model, a miniature model of our show on our kitchen table as a first step to developing. I mean, we homeschool our three kids, so we're always trying to find some sort of original curriculum. So there was about a year where this was their curriculum, was we were creating and playing around with these ideas and um, naming animal creatures. And mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. The kids oh. were doing the puppeting and, and we were... Um you know, helping guide them through in, in the magical, uh, our, uh, our Bannerberry, our uh, make, you know, make believe. And uh, so we have, we have, <laughs> we have a lot of uh, experience with them doing all the stuff. And we thought that's the direction it would go. Uh, and then it ended up morphing into this other thing that we now we love. Um, but yeah, the kids, our kids uh, were um, big, big parts of the development. In fact, a lot of the, some of the inspiration is um, I would uh, make up uh, bedtime stories for the kids with uh, characters and um, I started coming up with these characters and then the stories would be a little consistent uh, and then we change a little and uh, and so those ended up being in the show some of those characters and so it's been uh, it's been fun uh, little Easter eggs especially for our kids like hey is that who we were talking about yep that's it <laughs> there are there are a lot of Easter eggs for just our kids alone so <laughs> <laughs> well and I love that there's like a consistent and large cast of characters and that it's done through so many different mediums. I mean, I love that there's puppets. I love that we go into animation. You have a book at one point. There's just like so much visual, but not overstimulating. And then we're getting these familiar faces brought in. Talk to me about kind of all those different elements that you've incorporated into every episode. Yes. Well, that was very strategic because from the beginning, our, our inspiration was to 
to make something that felt the way Mr. Rogers used to feel. Um, and our kids love Mr. Rogers, but they also are a bit extreme in that they haven't been exposed to a ton of screen time, so they have the attention span to handle it. Whereas, um, you know, the, the modern attention span and what kids expect when they sit down to watch shows is a little different. So we had to be really creative about how do we keep this pace gentle and slow uh, and, and grounded, but also have a lot of fun along the way and adding all those whimsical elements and making sure that the scoring really took us through from scene to scene and keeping things exciting with all these gadgets in Mabel's house. And we were very For intentional me, I... that we wanted to have uh, as many practical uh, effects as possible to emphasize the um, the kind of uh, the vintage or old school aesthetic, uh, the memories we have growing up watching shows, you know, before uh, you could do everything with a computer. So everything that can be practical is practical. You know, the the machines and the, the Wonder Wheel, those are real things that were actually made. And um, and, the, and the stop motion town uh, is all made of paper and mm -hmm. wood and little props that are felt and yarn. And, and so we wanted it to have that that feeling of fun, but also a bit nostalgic and, and really sweet. Well, I definitely think that you accomplished that because my kids are eight and five and I sat down with my kindergarten daughter and I said, we're going to watch this new show. And we started watching it and she was like, I really like this. And, and we both enjoyed it. And her favorite aspects of it were those tangible pieces when it came to the question of the day and you see the marble or ball drop and then the mm -hmm. wheel spin. I mean, she literally looked at me and like, this is impressive. Oh, that's was, awesome. That I love that. Favorite. It was so cute, just her little vocabulary as she's processing what she's seeing, because it is so different than a lot of the content that's out there in a really positive and unique way. So I appreciated all that kind of tangibility. It crossed, it crossed the plane into our living room for sure. Oh, that that's is, so sweet. That that's one, wonderful. Yeah. Well, there's so many incredible things that um, you can do with technology now and kids content, but there's also so many incredible things that existed before that technology did that are wonderful. And so our our hope was that um, today's kids would would get that and love it so much. So I love to hear that. Yes. And for me, it was the it was the music. It was the score that like oh, every move that you have has music attached to it in a really fun and playful way and also helps with the social emotional like it should I be happy in this scene should I if we're gearing up to be sad um so talk to me a little bit about the importance of the music it, it's key role I think was to help us accomplish the um slow pace that we wanted to have and um we we wanted kids to be able to sort of have a moment to breathe and process what just happened. So we didn't want Mabel to walk from room to room in our house. And it's an enormous set. It really is a big house. And so there's a lot of dead air as she moves about her house, but we wanted it there. And we didn't want her to kind of turn to camera and be like, come on kids, we're marching this way. <laughs> uh, we wanted a, a sort of gentle way for a kid to quietly process what just happened and take a beat. And so the scoring, these composers um, that we worked with were so talented and just filling that space. And, and I think in a way that allows a kid to sit with what just happened before the next thing happens. We're really proud of the oh, music yeah. in the show. Yeah, scoring is one of the things we probably talked about one of the earliest aspects. So, and we had, we had you know, had ideas and you know, I thought uh, maybe there's a world where it's all a certain genre, maybe there's a world, and then we we landed, especially with these wonderful composers, the this um, a, a wonderful mix of of these sounds and you know some country jazz type sounds, western swing, and and it just they they just really captured it, and uh, we're uh, we're so thrilled. Yeah, and, and and as she was saying, you know, with a show that's slightly paced down and not the quick cuts, there there are those moments, and they're purposeful that it's uh, a little. Um, uh, it's it's there's a method to it, and so yeah, the music was to 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 keep you with her as you're thinking about what just happened and where are we going, and uh, instead of just a quick cut. Uh, so we're man, we're just so thrilled. Uh, we we love these uh, these musicians so much. They they've uh, man, it's just we love it. I've only gone to see a couple episodes. I haven't we haven't del delved into the whole thing yet, which I'm excited to do. But um, I understand you're even going to have you know some guest appearances from maybe some familiar faces. How did that come about? Yes, um, we we just asked. We we dreamed big and asked, and Mabel ends up on a 
enormous famous football field talking to the head coach uh she learns to ice skate from scott hamilton um wild. olympic gold medalist That's scott wild. hamilton uh that really happened yes that really happened <laughs> that was real she, life um she learns to play the banjo with an incredible uh 14 time grammy winning musician i mean we dreamed big and and people said yes and there are so many fun adventures that are to come in season one probably one of my favorites mm -hmm. is actually a more simple one we took mabel to a chocolate chocolatier and she learned to make chocolate with all these big factory machines and stuff and that was such a sweet one i oh, i yeah. don't know i don't don't think I could pick a favorite, but she certainly had a lot of adventures. Oh, yeah. And the folks that said yes to, uh, to be our guests and be on the show, I mean, the kindness, they just, uh, they really poured the kindness out. And uh, we just, overall, like, these are strangers, we're strangers to them. And man, they just came and blessed our socks off. And it just felt like that throughout the whole making of the show, uh, inc including the, the crew on every level. It was just um, kind of a kindness overload. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, just the fact that you know, she learned, you know, ice skating from Scott Hamilton on there. And he doesn't know us. And he was awesome. And Ron Block playing the banjo. That guy is awesome. I love that guy. I love that I can call that guy a friend now. And uh, there's, just, that, there's just endless stories like that. So to, to come take a chance on us and be guests and, um, and let Mabel learn uh, things and, and expose uh, those, those, things, those subjects to the, the children we're trying to entertain and, and teach. It's just awesome. I'm so excited for audiences to get the opportunity to see it and interact with it. And this is all going to be available on the Benzkey app. Talk to me a little bit about Benzkey. Yes, it's a brand new app. And um, we think it's the greatest thing ever as parents uh, because now our, our kids just turn it on and we're like, you can, we, we've, we know all these shows and all of them are being really carefully vetted and looked at. And, um, and, and so they, they all feel like what we love, which is imaginative, wholesome, happy shows that are teaching values. We all agree on it's, it's a really joyful place to grab kids content. And um, we felt so aligned with Bent Key and that vision of just creating shows that um, that feel good. I'm coming, Jasper. I'm coming.